uh, all of you. Uh, let us start by reviewing the computational concept to determine the deformation of axially low depth structural member. Uh, I should start with all of this kind of thing gonna be the what you know two force member if it's not in tension it will be in compression or if you prefer to draw the simple model is going to be something like this and then we use the knowledge from chapter one and from chapter two from the chapter one we have the stress equal to the internal force divided by the area and also due to the deformation of the material under force that is the deformation and if it is in tension that is going to be elongation and if it's in compression it's going to be in con contraction and then if you divide the deformation by the original ring you got the normal strain we call it as the epsilon it is going to be related to the sigma which is the normal stress and if you test uh, a material according to in thailand thailand industrial standard and you plot the vertical axis at the normal stress and the horizontal axis as the normal stem for a typical material such as a steel is we have a deform a yielding lesion and it's going to have large deformation this kind of behavior of the structure in a big, big picture we call it ductile 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 material and in a ductile material we separate the behavior of this material into two things one is one is going to be elastic that is going to be something that you elongate and if you release the force it's come back to its original length okay and the also part this is elastic the also part is going to be in elastic or some people said it's going to be plastic and then you may pick up a plastic bag and do the experiment what i have shown you guys before and it's going to be very very simple some people may be bored with what i'm showing you for the elastic okay you cook it and it's deform a little bit release it it's come back you pull it deform it it's elongated and then when you release the force it's returned original range however if you increase the force and make it to the plastic region is going to have very large deformation most of the time is so large that the structure can perform the function properly so we prevent the structure to have this kind of plastic deformation and in this region when you release the force is going to have some part return and some part permanent set okay and that's going to be the big concept what we are talking in this side okay let's us go a little bit this is going to be elastic region and another part is going to be plastic or or in elastic and then most of the time before you perform the computation for the deformation you got to find the mechanical property of the material mechanical and for the mechanical properties properties you got to check with the 
standards of your country. If this is a steel, following the Thailand industrial standard, you got to find sigma supply, which is what? Yielding stress. Most of the time is, is the point that separate the elastic with the plastic is, is very important one. That's most of the time that means we use this sigma sub y to separate. Theoretically, if what theoretically you know it, it's going to be elastic limit. But elastic limit, the yielding and the proportional limit, they are so close. And for the convenience of the application, the standard such as Thai industrial standard set sigma sub y to be the, the mechanical property that's used to separate this kind of two behavior. Second, you got to determine the ultimate stress. That is going to be the maximum stress. That's material calysis. And then why we supposed to determine sigma sub u is going to be the least of strength of the material. You can see most of the time for the steel, Sigma sub y usually is going to be structural steel 250 megapascal. And sigma sub u is going to be 400 megapascal. At this 400 megapascal, the structure didn't break into two, two pieces. Okay, it's still, still connect to each other, but it's deformed a lot, significantly larger than uh, to let the structure perform the function properly. And then you will see the necking. And finally, you will reach this point. This is going to be what's so called some Ajahn Korkit, rupture, some Korkit, fracture, stress. That is going to be a point that you guys supposed to determine it. And how I can find it? properly for each of this one. You got to do the proportional thing, if you remember. Okay, and uh, if you don't remember, go back to the previous video clips. And then the third, you got to find the E. The E is going to be modulus of elasticity. You can pick any point within this linear elastic region. Since this elast linear elastic region hooks law apply, so the E can be determined the ratio between the stress by the, the epsilon. Okay, and then the unit of this is going to be very large for the steel in the chica pascal. And most of the time, the unit of stress is going to be in the mega pascal. Please observe this to check your result also. And the last one, you got to find the percent elong, elongation. And some uh, thing people said, you may use the epsilon of F, but actually, practically, it doesn't epsilon of F. Since the percent elongation come from, come from the uh, equation, that's, you know, it's going to be uh, L sub F minus L sub O, dy L sub O, and time 100. But the L sub F uh, can create from the subspecimen that's returned by the uh, elastic recovery. So it's going to be very close to, but exact, not exactly the same, okay? And anyway, this is up on this. If you go to my, my PowerPoint, you have the, proportional limit very close to the yielding and most of the time we equal it and this is the point separate the elastic behavior with the plastic behavior and then ultimate and then fracture and then modulus of elasticity and at the elastic behavior the Hooke's law apply so when you have a structure, one may be large, one may be small, okay? Sometimes the 
behavior of this one may be plastic as the previous example. For the big one, the strength is going to be less. That is going to be elastic. Or some other decide the problem to be the same. <laughs> no, not the same. But, but maybe a little bit different inside. And the behavior may be elastic and elastic. Some other may decide the problem to be, this is going to be elastic and elastic. This is elastic, plastic. It can be plastic and plastic. This is going to be three types of problem for the computation of the deformation of the two force member. And then you got to check when it's going to be elastic, when it's going to be plastic, just compute. Okay, the elastic stress with respect to the yielding stress. Whenever it's less than yielding stress, it's going to be elastic stress. Okay, and then the deformation of the structure can be computed by finding the elastic strain. And since you know the 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 elastic the deformation gonna be the strain time the length. So elastic deformation can be the strain elastic time length. Or if you prefer you just put this one to be P over A equal to E delta over L. You may get this equation to be delta equal to PL over AE. For the elastic region, these two equations, they're going to provide the same result, okay? And we're going to use this equation a lot in the next chapter, okay? But for this one, it's up to you. You may like to have the black one or you may like to have the, the, the oops, sorry, <laughs> the <coughs> yellow one. Okay. Next, some portion in elastic, okay, following what we have here. But some stress is going to be go beyond this and then come to the plastic region, okay, by the stress that's larger than, larger than, larger than the stress at the plastic going to be larger than sigma sub y. So we cannot compute the strength from this equation. You're going to determine the plastic strain by, by putting the plastic stress and project it up to the point and then project it down to measure the, the plastic state. Okay, this one is going to be the plastic state. Sorry, just last this one. And this one, you're going to use it to determine the, the plastic deformation. This equation is still correct. And but the certain, the, sorry, the plastic deformation gonna be, gonna be, sorry, <laughs> plastic deformation gonna be plastic certain time the length. And again, you may determine the the plastic deformation, okay? And then due to this, when is you release the force, when you release the force, the return of the club not follow the original part, but it will follow the new part in which, what in which the return part has the same slope as the linear elastic portion and then you may compute again following this equation following this equation so this equal to e certain and then certain is going to be stress divided by e but the certain here is going to be recovery strain okay 
ไดไอพูเดอะพลาสติกแบกเวลี่ลาชดีฟอร์เมชันแอนด์เดนเวลี่ยูสฟอร์ is return a little bit that is going to be sustain recovery some people call it recovery sustain or elastic recovery and then the total of this is going to be the plastic stain if you prefer to determine this one is going to be called permanent stain or permanent set is just you just subtract the plastic stain with the recovery stain and then not enough you going to determine the permanent deformation okay and you go back to the same equation the permanent deformation gonna be gonna be permanent stain time the length and then you got it that is going to be the whole concept thing and all of the question gonna be this kind of thing if you understand that slide you will understand what they are asking you and you understand the meaning of of the different kind of stresses and you know how to determine it you just mean you can start to compute for the deformation of the structural member both elastic plastic and permanent deformation and come to the example d3-1 you have the utm this called the universal testing machine if you like to seek it go to the f4 f5 or f6 and then you have the specimen you put the specimen over here you measure the load okay so you all may also measure the deformation and then you divide the load by the cross sectional area that you can compute from here and then you divide the deformation by this gauge length and you will have the stress strain diagram from the stress strain diagram they ask you guys to determine this type of mechanical properties of the material and i should say again four of the three of them here are very important following the the american standard and forking the thailand industrial standard is a must so you guys to know three of this and then you may find the stress and find the strain photograph like the whole work t dash one and then when you put the glove if you put the glove and you find that the scale that you use may be too large or too rough and you may plot another scale by this blue dotted line and the brown line we refer to the rough scale or large scale is going to be on this low and the second scale is going to basis on this low so when you determine the mechanical property use the correct one because when you determine the ultimate stress or the fracture stress you got to use the large or rough scale but when you determine the modulus of elasticity you determine the the yield stress even the proportional stress and modulus of resilience you going to use the five scale okay and by doing this just classify it properly okay and then when you start to determine the modulus of elasticity just use this one i just cut the graph cut the graph to a small portion because modulus of elasticity going to be determined in the linear elastic region so in the linear elastic region is going to be somewhere <laughs> somewhere you put the ruler and then you draw the line okay it's going to be somewhere in this linear portion and then you may set 
a reference. Usually, I set a state. Okay, by putting this, I putting this a small one. A state of zero point o o one. Okay, and then I project the line up, and then it cut it cut the curve over here. When it cut the curve, you just draw the horizontal line and you compute this value. For example, for example, you measure from this to this, from 200 to 300, that is going to be 100 megapascal. And then you get it for 10 millimeter. Use your, your ruler or protector rulers and then you measure this small difference here, okay? And it said you measure this for two millimeter. If you measure this one for two millimeter, it's gonna be two times 100 divided by 10. That is going to be 20 megapascal. And then that is gonna be 220. Do something like this for every stasis you are determined. The medical engineering, the civil engineering student, uh, you guys gonna do the material testing lab. And then you may have a practical or may you have hand-on experience on this. And then you got the stain, you got the stress, you compute it. You get this modulus of elasticity for 220 gigapascal. And I this told you that the E of the steel is approximate 200 gigapascal. That can be 190, 200, 210, and sometimes it's 220 for this example. And then you go to this mean the sigma sub proportion. Use your ruler, okay? Put it onto the glass and then just draw the line. When you See the point that this one, nearly this one, that separate this one, separate the red line of the curve is supposed to be about this point. Okay, about this point. You just mark it and do the same thing and do the same thing. Measure this length. Okay, and for doing this, you got to do the proportion. If you measure it for five millimeter, this is going to be 250. If you measure it to 5.5, that is going to be 255. And if you measure it for six millimeter, you will get it 260. And believe me, Ajahn will give all of you correct answer, okay? And by doing this, you get it to 55. You may answer to 50. You may handle to 60. They are acceptable. Okay. And then, and then to determine this, this is modulus of Lesselian. Modulus of Lesselian is the area under the stress strain diagram for the proportional limit. So you got to determine certain at the proportional limit, just project it down and do the same thing, okay? And do the same thing of proportion. You got this for 0.0012. And then, you know, this area is going to be the triangle. So the U sub R gonna be one half sigma sub proportion, certain time, certain sub proportion. You just put everything together. And I should know that this is going to be an, an one half of 255, 10 power 6 Newton per square meter. And then it's going to have point oh, oh, one, two. You may change this one to be meter by meter. Okay. And then you will get this one and you time kit, time this one. Okay, you may get this one for 0, 1, 5, 3, 10, power 6. It's going to be Newton time meter. 
and ha and at this divider is going to be cubic meter okay and then you know any and work is the proportion to each other okay and then work is force force time displacement is going to have the unit of newton time meter and then you call this one jun okay so this is going to be the jun and this is going to be the mega and then it's going to be mega jun and divided by cubic meter okay this is going to be the energy density because it divided by the volume of the material okay and again we use this one for what more of less t h a t that's used to absorb the 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 vibration of the machine those kind of thing in mechanical engineering going to use this a lot okay and uh, civil engineering maybe use the process of toughness that's we when we have talked about what's of toughness already and then since this one has no clear unit point since this one has no clear when the material has no clear unit point you got to use zero point two percent offset to determine it this means you going to use zero point two divided by hundred that is going to be point o o two so you got to mark this point and then you that the line that that parallel to the the linear elastic portion and then we when it cut the curve you got to do the projection and now you measure this for 3.3 millimeter so by this one is going to be 35 so this sigma supply is going to be 335 mega pascal okay so all this you got to use the curve with the five scale and we have to l e f t for the ultimate stress and the fracture stress you got to go to the 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 large or l o u g h scale okay by doing this just put the graph okay and do a good estimation of this length of this length and do a correct proportion that's going to be very easy you guys can get full score for finding or determining the mechanical property of the materials and when you go to work you also are able to do so okay and then we come to a structure this is going to be the second part or the second learning objective that we have on this chapter okay uh, we have a member and sometimes they didn't give you this one if they give you this one that is going to be a nice of the professor who give you the two force member the l i q u i d but somehow but somehow they didn't they may ask you to do this this is a two force member okay pin at c and pin at a and is support the beam over here okay under the force of 1.8 kilo newton and then you know this guy is going to be the same one the 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 two force member however what is going to be the tensile force p so by doing this it means a c h a r like to test the knowledge <laughs> test the knowledge no knowledge of what of engineering static okay if a c h a r give you p you don't need to determine you don't need to draw the f i b e r diagram and use the equation of equilibrium that is going to be good but if a c h a r ask you to do this don't <laughs> make a mistake okay that's the old previous knowledge so by doing this the member gonna be two force member so 
the beam gonna subject that to the tension F sub AC and L here is the point B is going to have F sub BY and F sub BX over here. And then you know that eliminate F sub BY and F sub BX. Just take the moment at point B. And then when you take the moment at point B and counterclockwise, <laughs> counterclockwise is positive. So the 108.8 times 1.25 going to produce positive moment and F sub AC time two, that's going to produce the negative moment. And then you get F sub AC to be 68 kilo Newton, the same as before. Okay, I just make this important note to tell you guys about in some problem. Okay, let us have this member ABC. Okay, and the AB is gonna be gonna be larger than the BC. It has the diameter of 20 millimeter, but BC has the diameter of 15 millimeter. And then since this one subjected to the two force member, if you guys just cut the member and then determine the force F sub AB, you do the summation of X sub X equal to zero. F sub AB over here gonna be 68 kilo Newton. And again, if you draw the free body diagram, Ajahn, let me skip on this. <laughs> I recommend you guys, if you have the written examination, don't skip it, okay? Make it, just follow the procedure, okay? In order to express your understanding of this subject of engineering static. So summation F sub X equal to zero. This one gonna be 68 kilo Newton. Since the force over here and the force over here, they are equal. The stress sigma sub AB and this one gonna produce sigma sub BC and then sigma sub AB is gonna be F sub AB divided by A sub AB and sigma sub BC gonna be F sub BC divided by A sub BC. Which one gonna be larger? This is any sense, okay? You may tell Ajahn easily the what? Which one gonna be larger, guys? Which one? AB or BC? Okay, BC is gonna be larger because the divider, the divider, okay, of the BC is small. When the divider is small, it's going to produce, produce large stress, okay? And this is the point when a child gonna decide the problem, okay? A child gonna think about what the value of sigma sub y Ajahn supposed to, to set, okay? I can decide this problem into three types. Again, the first one is gonna be elastic and elastic, okay? The second one, Ajahn may decide this one to be the plastic and plastic. And then Ajahn, can also, the third, this side is as elastic, plastic, or if <laughs> you can say the fourth one can be plastic, elastic, okay? This is going to be type TYPE, types of our problem. But don't worry, just fix stick with your principle. You can determine this easily. So the first one, the P apply to this member A, B, C. They ask us to determine the elongation of the line. So 
you got to check okay the stress the stress to be elastic or plastic and and that is going to check with what with the sigma sub y you did determine this already and then if for the following slide you will see that this is going to be larger than sigma sub y so this one will have the plastic behavior and for sure this one going to be smaller because it's big section sigma sub y so this one will have elastic behavior so to determine this that's mean the total deformation gonna be the deformation of the ab and the deformation of the bc and this one gonna be elastic and this one gonna be plastic the way we determine the deformation is going to be different right this is going to be different this one going to be by the elastic so go to the first slide you will see how we determine it we will talk about this later and then and then this is going to be the deformation of of ab <laughs> this is going to be delta ab and this is going to be delta bc when you release the force what happened is delta sub ab will return to its it zero value when you release the force but delta sub bc will be include two things one going to be the delta recovery and another one is going to be the delta permanent so when you release the lot return to original then no only ab return to original rank, not bc okay not bc bc what if not if not what is going to be this permanent set i like you guys to understand the concept and use the concept properly okay and now between the elongation we said no <laughs> the stay stand i can i also can say <laughs> but this one the surface then I can specify sigma supply already. And then sigma supply is going to be 68,000 Newton. And if you prefer, I recommend you guys to use this 10 millimeter square. This is going to be in the Newton per millimeter. And Newton per millimeter is going to be megapascal. See, the red one is going to be smaller than sigma supply. That's going to be elastic. However, for this one, since the, 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 the diameter is smaller, so you just divide it by 7.5 millimeter, millimeter square, and then you get this. This is going to be larger than sigma sub y. This is going to be smaller than sigma sub y. The Sigma sub AB is going to be in the linear elastic region. When it is elastic region, Hooke's law is applied. You can determine the strain by stress divided by E. Okay, and then your strain is going to be delta over L. So you just find the deformation by the strain time L. Or if you prefer, you may use delta equal to PL over AE, in which P is 65, 65 kilo Newton. L is going to be this one. A is going to be pi, pi R square. And then you got the E. <laughs> you got the E from the previous one. But if a giant won't provide you with the E, you cannot do so. Okay, so you got to follow this small step. Okay, so this equation may be convenient. It's going to be used in 
chapter four is cannot be compute if we don't have the e. Okay, but we also have the e for sure. Okay, just put the e over here. The velocity of elasticity divide the stress. You got the strain. Most of the time, the strain gonna be the elastic strain. The elastic, the the plastic, the plastic strain gonna be very small. Okay, this is gonna be nine point eight four one four one ten minus four. Okay, and then the next one, BC gonna have large strain for sure. Okay, because elastic strain always small. Plastic strain will be large usually larger than point oh oh two. Okay. And we cannot compute the strain by using the Hooke's law since it is in the plastic region. You, we use the stress strain diagram. Okay, we use the stress strain diagram. From the stress strain diagram, 384.8. Where is it? <laughs> this is 300. This is 400. Three, three, 84.8. So if this is 10 millimeter, this is going to be about about 8.48 millimeter. Your ruler cannot measure 8.48. Usually, you may measure 8.5. <laughs> so you measure this one for 8.5 millimeter and project kit at two to this certain curve and project it down to the phi scale, okay? And then when you arrive here, this one, this one is going to be 0 0.0110, okay? It's not 10 yet. And then you can do the proportion. This is going to be not 0 0.0110, 0 0.0108. Now, this is going to be certain plus state, and it's going to be certain of the BC, okay? By doing this, you use the strain of the plastic, okay? That is going to be small, and this strain is going to be large. You can see that is what? Um, our hundred times larger, <laughs> hundred times larger. So put them together into your calculator. You time the BC by what? By 400. You time sub a certain sub AB by 500. So don't mix it. Got to be very careful to put them on. Okay. And then we got the total deformation of the axial loaded member ABC to be 4.8. So L palm is going to be for 500 plus 400 plus 4.8. That is going to be 904.8 millimeter. Now we do the release of this one and this one will return back. But this one will return some as the, due to the certain recovery and to produce the, the, the certain, not the, the, the recovery deformation. And another one that is going to produce the certain permanent and then is going to produce the permanent deformation. And then they asked us to find the permanent set of the lot or what is so called the delta per or permanent deformation. Okay. And then what we have is we got to go back to our state strain diagram for the BC, but for the AB is okay. It's gone. So go back. And then the return of this is going to be, you got to be really careful. Use your ruler tying to draw the line that's parallel to the first one. And then you can 
projected to this one don't 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 estimate it you got to do the computation stress equal to e strain and then strain equal to stress this one plastic divided by e stress plastic is stress sigma sub bc which is 384.8 divided by 220 gigapascal so beware about this is megapascal this is gigapascal you get the certain recovery to be 0 0.00175 and then the less of it you just subtract the red with the blue okay and then you got the purple and this is going to be the permanent stain and then the permanent stain or you may call this is per olinian remain or per the same thing okay that is going to be 3.6 so alpha palm palm is going to be 903.6 millimeter we start with the l of 900 millimeter and then l palm is 904.8 millimeter so the elastic elastic <laughs> recovery recovery deformation gonna be 4.8 minus 3.2 that is gonna be 1.2 millimeter okay you can determine this this certain recovery over here this is gonna be 1.2 millimeter okay this is going to be 3.6 millimeter and the elastic is 4.8 so this is for this kind of problem okay and if you go to some extra problem at the end of this uh, lecture note we have three of them you can see is following this ah let us jump to this point okay uh i have post i have post uh this one uh for you guys to study by <laughs> not this one okay this one right no how come <laughs> stop challenge and then what happened to this one okay do i do again ah okay i have some more <laughs> example let you guys to time to work on this kind of the old examination and if you go to this powerpoint before you may see this problem the actually loaded member or this one is the column they are in, in in compassion they act at a column okay the first portion determine the mechanical property of the material and then for this one you just take a calculation to determine a lot of things and at the end of this they ask you to determine the total contraction or uh, it's going to be compressive deformation you can go to with this video clip and it's in Thai anyway but don't worry even though it's in Thai I, 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 I didn't have uh, one in English yet but I think you guys just follow the symbol and you will take and understand about it easily and this is also the second one that, but this one is in tension so in general this kind of problem can be classified into two types one is in compression one is in tension or one may be combination of tension and compression that is going to be a little bit harder but it's not that hard for you guys about this so just go feverly diagram use equation of equilibrium to determine the internal force determine the stress the same thing see and then you determine the deformation delta and determine the permanent set and permanent deformation 
go to this video clip. And also the last one, we don't have the video clip, uh, uh, but I think you guys can, can generate it because it's maybe the incoming, <laughs> incoming midterm examination. <laughs> we didn't use this one for the examination yet, but uh, it's a good one. Okay, that's, I like you guys have a chance to go there. For the list of the slide, uh, it is important, but it's not quite <laughs> that important. But you guys need to do something if you are in the uh, ME. Is that ME student? Oh. Okay, okay, oh yeah. Hmm. Can you see me? No. What happened to this? Uh, anyway, uh, let me take this one. Okay. And coming to the next one. Uh, okay. So you guys can see this? Hmm. What happened? Let me take it out. Okay. Uh, let's start again. <laughs> Sorry for that. There is something wrong over here. Okay, next uh, we come to what so called the person ratio. Person ratio is important, uh, especially when you decide the plate. Is it to do the for the select? or the plate is the same thing. It's going to be something with this kind of shape or the circular. Uh, and it's also important in some cases. For example, if you test the cast iron, okay, when you compare this, what happened is the, the structural member Maybe, maybe shortened, but the lateral, the lateral, it can be shortened this direction, but the lateral gonna be get larger. What so called this is gonna be bush out, and this effect make the cast iron has very high capacity for the compression. Okay. Uh, Professor Po Song, that is about uh, 200 something years ago, he made a notice on the behavior of the material. Before the action of the force, the structure has this kind of, this kind of dimension. Okay. And when you pull it, it get the elongation, but the lateral gonna have the contraction. Why? Because volume before, okay? Uh, before the force, volume of the material must equal to the volume after deformation. And that's why when it get elongation, Okay, the location in this longitudinal is going to get contraction in the lateral dimension. But if you compress it, it's going to get the shortening or contraction. But when it's contraction, it's going to get bigger in the lateral direction. I have this kind of, <laughs> of rubber if you like to shake it. You just take a rubber stick. See, when you poke it, when you poke it, it's going to get elongation and you can see the side of it could get smaller, see? That is the effect, the volume before must equal to the volume after action of the force. And just this simple experiment gonna explain the Poisson ratio. And then there is going to have, one is going to, for this example, one is going to be the 
elongation elongation in 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 long did you know okay direction and then for this lateral okay this is going to be contraction so the stain that is going to be lateral going to compute by the lateral deformation so the lateral strain is going to be the lateral deformation divided by this one divided by the diameter okay and this one going to be negative for the strain for for this one is going to be elongation so if you see this is going to be the sum of them okay that is going to be let me put this one to be the long digital okay to produce the long digital stem and then it's got to divide it by the l this is going to be positive that means when you compute the poor song ratio you got to put the certain lateral divided by certain long kichurino since the side this one is negative this one is positive to make this poor song ratio with the positive side you got to push this one into the equation so the lateral strain has the negative okay the longitudinal has the positive so we got to put the negative in front of this equation to make this mu the Poisson ratio you call it mu usually or mu depend on you going to use it okay and this one gonna be the Poisson ratio equal to minus lateral stem divided by longitudinal stem the CE student you're going to have the lab to measure the Poisson ratio of the lab work in the next course of material testing okay and also when you do the comparison things are opposite that means the certain lateral gonna be positive certain longitudinal gonna be negative this negative side gonna take care of that and then the Poisson ratio of the steel can be in the length of 0.28 for 0.32 that is going to be about 30 percent okay the lateral deformation going to be 30 percent of the longitudinal direction however this one the rubber can be as large as 60 or 70 percent okay and then there is some application especially when you build an aircraft okay why because when the aircraft at the thirty thousand feet okay elevation i mean uh, flight elevation or about 10 kilometer the pressure over there is is so light okay and the pressure inside of the pen must be equal to the pressure on earth that means the pressure inside going to be large and then if the structure has this type of lateral deformation the air may leak so you got to prevent that you got to consider the lateral deformation in the analysis and design of the structure okay oh when you decide a hydraulic cylinder for the me student or for the polymer chemical engineering student and then when you are having get the compassion you have to still still two okay and if something happened the inside expand then it may cause stuck <laughs> of the hydraulic cylinder due to this kind of lateral deformation okay let's ask has this kind of steel bar this steel bar subjected to 80 
Kilo Newton force. We like to calculate the change in the length. Okay, that is going to be this one. How much is going to change the width? Okay, and also the depth. Okay, that is going to be this one to see the this change in length. You just determine the the long longitudinal strain, okay, and then the longitudinal strain gonna be used to determine the longitudinal deformation, okay, or the axial deformation. However, for the width and the depth, we don't have direct equation to determine it. We got to use the Poisson ratio, okay, in which the Poisson ratio is going to be minus certain lateral width <laughs> and then divided by the width, the certain longitudinal, okay, this one, this one will come from what? equal to the deformation okay of the width divided by a hundred so you know this value you know this value you can you can determine this one after you determine the lateral stand in the width direction you can determine the 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 what deformation the change in width, okay, the depth also. So by doing this, what we need to know before you can determine this one, you got to check for the stress. Before you can find the stress, you got to find the internal force. Internal force is easy because this is axial force. This is going to be 80 kilonewton. And then divided by the area, Oh, the area is simple. That is going to be 50 times 100. So this is going to be, for my calculation, 80,000 divided by 5000. One, two, three. One, two, three. That is going to be 80 divided by 5. <laughs> so this is going to be 16. This is going to be 16. Newton per millimeter square or 16 megapascal. And then this is supposed to be less than sigma sub y. Okay. And then this one, this steel, sigma sub y of steel of 250 megapascal. So this is going to be linear elastic. Okay. Behavior. So you can use the Hooke's law, okay? By Hooke's law, sigma equal to E epsilon. Epsilon in longitudinal direction. Longitudinal direction. Equal to stress in the longitudinal direction divided by E. So longitudinal state is very small. <laughs> 80, 10 minus 6 millimeter by millimeter. Structural engineering call this is going to be 80 micro strain and then put it plus this is going to be in tension. And now the change in length, you got to have what? Stain equal to deformation time L. So L is going to be stain time length. That is going to time this one, 1.5 meter. That is going to be 120 micro meter or it's going to be millimeter 0.12 millimeter this is very small uh very small compared to the one in the ruler and you can measure it by using the vernier and then for the contraction go to the Poisson <laughs> Poisson ratio equal to certain lateral and go by the width width divided by certain inset direction, in C direction. This is going to be 
stay in longitudinal. So this no, you know it over here, and this one already determined it. So just put this one into this equation. So then, now uh, in in the longitudinal direction, time the Poisson ratio of the steel new of steel. So that is going to be negative. Okay, it's going to have the shortening or contraction of 25.5 micrometer per meter. And then going again is dependent on the length. Okay, for the width, you time it with 100 or 0 0.1 meter. And for the depth, you time it with 0 0.05 meter. So you get the deformation of the width and the depth. That is very, very small. Okay, since the stress is small, so this is just 16 megapascal compared to, to this one. If you expand it 10 times, okay, if you expand this 10 times, when the stress getting 160 megapascal, so still less than this, the linear elastic behavior, okay, this one will change to 1.2 millimeter. Okay, this one will change to, to 25.6 micrometer. This one will change to 12.8 micrometer. They are still small. Okay, and aluminum also have this type of small Poisson ratio. So, UV airplane will not have the air leak if you decide it properly by using a, a correct one. And there is another example. I just let you guys to go to all of this. Most of the time, we didn't have asked you much about this, but it's kind of interesting to know when the column get the compression, how much is going to change the shape. Okay, let's see. We have the hollow steel column. This is hollow. This is a hollow steel column. Okay, and they have the Diameter, this is the one is the inside diameter and this one is outside diameter. When you determine this area is going to be uh, pi d2 square minus divided by four pi d1 square divided by four. So that is going to be the area. Just uh, compute the area of this hollow section okay you may you may subtract the area of the hollow section from the total area or you may use this equation to determine the cross section why again okay, you got to check the stress okay the stress is going to be this one <laughs> that is going to be a million newton and then divided by this area, okay? So you can determine the stress. And then you mean the stress, you can find the strength just by the area, okay? From this, you determine the certain, that is going to be certain in the longitudinal direction. That is going to be the, the axial compressive strength. And then you may use this one to determine the, the deformation or the axial contraction okay and then and then the lateral stain just from the Poisson ratio minus lateral stain divided by longitude you know you know this one already you know this one so you can determine this so just compute it that is going to be 182.2 megapascal that is going to be less than sigma sub y Okay, the steel is linear, elastic behavior. And then Hooke's law applied. So you just compute it. It's going to be negative. Okay, that is going to be negative. Or it's going to be equal to minus. Uh, that is going to be, uh, if you would like it, uh, 926 micro certain. <laughs> that is going to be such an engineering language. And then the deformation equal to stain time L. That is going to be the contraction of the column. 
That's it's going to be very small. <laughs> That is going to be one, two, three minus zero point one three nine millimeter. Not notice if the structure is in linear elastic. You won't see the contraction of the column of your dormitory or your house. Most of the time is small when it's in linear elastic. But later I will show you if the behavior of your house of your dormitory column is in plastic region. That is going to be large uh, contraction. And then lateral is going to be minus, uh, minus and minus. That's assuming positive, right? And then you're going to get this one for, for expansion or bigger, okay? And then that's also to 28, 10, minus six. Oh, that is quite small. <laughs> if you like to see the dimension, you just time the D2 diameter with this one. And that is going to be very small expansion. That is going to be outer diameter. And how about inner? Just time this lateral step with the inner diameter. And then you can see if you minus, uh, uh, you can see the shape in the thickness, okay? Just time the lateral span with the radius, outside radius. This is supposed to be R, R2, and this is gonna be R1. You can see the thickness, very infinitely decimal, small, nearly cannot see it, okay? And also, you're going to have another laboratory, both the civil engineering student and the ME student. The Poisson ratio, the CE student have the laboratory. This torsional test by, by torsional testing machine over here. Okay, you just put your specimen over here and then when you rotate this one, your specimen will be twist. Okay, you put this one, Going to be twist. This one will show the gamma. This one will show you the torsion and how going to be TR over J, the torsion that's measured from, from, from the machine. Uh, this, no, this is going to show you the torsion and, and, uh, mm, no, the, the twisting is here. Yeah, the, 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 the rotation. They use the, the angle of the twist and the angle of the twist over here compute to be the strength. And this is show you the torsion and torsion put into this equation, torsion times time the radius divided by polar moment of inertia. And J is equal to I sub X plus I sub Y. Since the section is circular, I sub X equal to I sub Y. So J is going to be two times of the moment of inertia of this section. Okay, by testing this, the mechanical engineering student, the CE student, you got to use this equation, okay, to determine the stress. And then, don't worry, <laughs> we will be talking about this in chapter five, okay, later. We will talk in, in chapter five, but lastly, just go to the chair, go to the, this is the, this is going to be the angle of twist. That's what I, this show you guys over here. This is phi, okay? The angle of twist will be used to determine the, the chair strength. And we will talking about this in chapter five. And then we got the graph. That is gonna be chair stress and chair strength. And typically, the graph of this one supposed to be brass and copper and aluminum. We have this kind of, of shear stress, shear strain. And then you have the proportional limit. And most of the time, you use this as the shear yielding stress. Okay, and then you have the G. 
during the linear elastic portion tau equal to shear modulus of elasticity time gamma this we call shear shear modulus of elasticity is represent the stiffness of the material in torsion is similar to the modulus of elasticity of the material in tension or in compression and then following this there is two important thing that we going to use in chapter 5 is going to be tau sub y and the shear modulus of elasticity and you can take it from the graph easily and then tau ultimate and tau sub f we use much and the same thing we have the high tau ultimate to make the structure under shear that is going to be the shaft okay you go under the pickup you can see the steel member that's connect the engine with the with the with the uh, the uh what's so called the spin the wheel okay the gear okay and then you get this one the shaft and most of the time the shaft transfer the torsion the torsion from the engine to the, the gear system and spin the wheel and then what we have this is going to be the same as before so don't worry about it and the failure the failure the failure the failure of the steel and cast iron in torsion are like this okay the ductile material will fail like this and the metal material will fail like a clack okay this picture these two pictures you will certainly again in the material testing and then you also can use this diagram okay to determine the certain and then determine the displacement d occur on the structural member this kind of thing you may see in the elevated highway that is a big beam and there is a pad under and un, un, under the that, that girder or the beam big beam and then that girder can move a little bit okay and when it's moved it will produce the shear force and then the first thing from the shear surface stain diagram can you find the proportional limit can you find the yielding shear stress can you find the ultimate shear stress this is the property the mechanical property of the material in shear stress okay and the second part if steel is in linear elastic just determine the shear strain and determine the displacement okay okay let's see this is going to be proportional shear stress okay this is going to be the same equal to the yielding shear stress that means it's going to be equal to tau sub y and this is going to be used again in chapter 5 and tau sub u the same thing and modulus you just use this 360 divided by by proportional shear strain you get the value of g to be 45 this one this one is going to be 45 giga pascal okay and now you can use this property to determine it so by doing this what we have is the maximum this basically occur at the end of linear elastic we occur over here okay and if it's linear elastic determine the maximum displacement maximum displacement occur in this because this one is the last point that's the behavior of the material is linear elastic so by understanding the problem statement you can say this gamma is going to be 0.008 
Radian. If this is 0 0.008 Radian, what is going to be this? So by doing this, tan of the gamma is going to be d over d over 50. Okay, so you just put tan of the gamma approximately gamma. So because the small angle in the radian unit, when you put inside and when you put in tangent, it's going to produce the same value. And then you can compute this to be 0.4 millimeter. This kind of path occur in the elevated highway. It's used to support the elevated highway. It is going to be allow the movement a little bit due to the braking force of the vehicle and due to the change in the temperature. Okay, and what's going to be the force <laughs> that's causing this 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 deformation at the end of linear elastic behavior? So the braking force supposed to be less than this. So how average equal to V over A. We have this one for 360. So the force must be divided by this area. It's going to be 100 times 75. And then that is going to be 2,700 kilonewton force. See, this kind of thing is maybe the shear force due to the temperature change because the temperature change the beam just get heat, heated, it's going to get elongated, okay? And for the baking force, also produce the shear onto that supporting pad on the elevated highway. Uh, actually, I have uh, something, but it's going to be very small. I don't know, I can show you on that pad or not. Mm. Actually, it's supposed to be in my cost of, let me time to find, uh, let me for you, uh, in the cost of theory of structure, I think. And that is going to be on the first chapter. Hmm. Okay, uh, let me check, do I have that structure or not? Hmm. No, not in theory of structure. Oh, uh, maybe in the next chapter. <laughs> Let me. Hmm. Okay. Uh, okay, I have it. Okay, what I can show you is this one. The, there is a pad over here, okay? That's supporting really big girder, okay? And due to the temperature check and due to the braking system, braking forces for the vehicle, this pad will subject that to uh, the shear force uh, and uh, I think I also have this one. No, nope. <laughs> I didn't have this one. Hmm. No, nope, not for this. Okay, anyway, uh, let us see. There it is a force. Uh, this is the force due to the blade of the vehicle. This is another one. See, when you, okay, when the vehicle break, okay, there is going to have ESTO, American Association for American Association of State Highway and Transportation Office, okay, it said the horizontal on the road due to the baking force on the vehicle is going to be zero 
10%, actually 10% of the life load of this vehicle. So that's pack going to subject that to this kind of force also. Okay. Okay, and let me go back to our lecture, the last part of our lecture. Uh, okay, and on our last portion of this, let us have some discussion on the material failure. That is two things. One is the creep, okay? And creep occur in the material such as concrete. And there is also relaxation that occur on the high strength steel, P stress Y, W-I-R-E, that's used to P stress the concrete. And the fatigue, fatigue may be uh, due to the wing of the airplane. Cream is the material failure due to the permanent deformation. This is continuously increased. So usually when the structure subjected to the force, the deformation gonna be in the linear portion, in this portion. But for somehow, such as the concrete, okay, when it's subjected to, to the force, long enough, there is a further deformation, it means larger deformation occur, okay, locker during the apparent stress on the material. Why? Because the concrete has the void inside it. It's going to, to manufacture by sand, cut stone, water, and cement pad mixed together. During the mix, there is a void. And in the void, there is a water. When the concrete is in compression for a long time, for a long time, with a proper magnitude, the water just leak out from the air void. And then the creep occur, and it won't go back <laughs> because the water cannot come back to the void due to the force. And this is what the creep occur on the parking garage, okay, in Pittsburgh, United States of America. The creep is time dependent defection, okay, that's occurred to this. It won't collapse, but the function of the structure just not proper. And then relaxation. When you pull the concrete and then you use the piece that wire and then you cast this one okay with the concrete what happened is when you pull this one it's going to be has the stress over here okay when you finish it but well, even though the pulling force is only 0 0.6 of the yielding stress but for somehow there is the sliding of the grain due to the high tensile stress. The, the pre-step wire just relax itself. And then the stress just reduce, okay? And then the function of the pre-step wire in concrete is not as intended. And then the structure cannot perform as the intended desire. That means like the previous one, if that is the, not the clip, <laughs> is the wire just relax, it's going to cause this thing. Fatigue. There is a force that act on the wing of the airplane. When the airplane fly, the airplane fly, this is fly just smooth. That is the wind, sometimes it's typhoon, sometimes it's the well, storm wind, sometimes it's soft wind, those kind of things. It's going to vibrate, okay, the wing on the top. What happened is, when the thing just get vibration like this, even though the structure is weighted on the, the, the ductile material, when it's subjected to repeated load, 
and then the stress that occur on the structure is less than sigma sub y. The dark time material may fail by abrupt failure, even though the stress occur inside the wing of the airplane is less than sigma sub y. That is by the fatigue. And not only the wing of the airplane, that is the wind turbine. You can go to Khao Yetian to see this car wind turbine. The connection of this wind turbine must be designed to prevent the fatigue and the wheel of the car also. Okay, it must be designed for this kind of impact. We have the fatigue testing machine in the lab. In the lab, the ME student and CE student, we will have a chance to do this SN diagram and determine the endurance limit in which the material can endure to a repeated number of forces and stress. We use that number to decide the wing <laughs> of the airhead, to decide the connection of the wind turbine, to decide the wheel, the wheel of, of, of the car. Okay, this is a kind of SN curve. Okay, and then this is going to be the stress, the stress that can be used in the design to resist the fatigue stresses. Okay, before this, on the example, we decide the axial loaded structural member basis on the static force, but this one is due to the the change, the load that's change with the time. Okay, and then you can see the endurance limit is about a half of the ultimate stress. Okay, and then that is a important thing of ultimate stress to be known. So we can estimate the endurance limit of our steam. Okay, and then uh, there is another. Just me move another material such as aluminum. We used a lot of aluminum in the structure of the airplane. Okay, but the aluminum didn't have a clear endurance limit. You're gonna find a pseudo endurance limit basis on what we are going to use. Okay, if we like to use this for a million times loading cycle, you can decide it by 220. If you like to it to take like uh, this is 100 times repeated load, you only decide it with endurance limit of 160. That means if you like the structure to resist more repeated load, the, the stress that you use, the allow your stress going to be smaller, smaller, okay? And to be sure, if you use this one for only <laughs> 100, 120, you know, our steel have sigma supply of 220 megapascal. It's okay for steel, it's had an enormous, but for the sigma supply of aluminum, of aluminum previously, we determine it to be 300, 350 megapascal. Okay, so if you divide the design by factor of safety of two, okay, your sigma allowable will be about 175 megapascal. That means your structure can have nearly 100 times of, of cycle of the loading. And if you like it to take more, you got to use the sigma allowable that's lower than this. That means you got to put a larger factor of safety to make your structure safe from the repeated load, from the wind, from the those kind of thing. And the problem is why is failed by brittle manner, the duct tie material always has the microplate, okay? This is the origin of the fatigue crack is, is in the form of 
micro crack. If you cut your finger with a knife and produce a small wound, and then if it's subjected to the repeated force like this, you will be hurt. The same thing, the material, if it has a small crack over here, and then when you when you test into this one, the crack just get the stress like this. It's rotated. Okay, it's going to be it's going to be tension, compression, tension, compression, tension, compression like this, and then the crack just get larger and larger. And finally, when it go to some region, the material that resists the the force is not enough. Okay, it's maybe reduced only in half and the failure is just kind of brittle, brittle failure of, you know, in the form of fatigue fracture, okay? That type material, that type material. Subjected to the force, repeated stress, they call it repeated stress. That is less than sigma sub y for for a number of times <laughs> a number a number of times of times and 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 fail and fai and and fails in blatant manner so we got to prevent it this kind of failure uh, i didn't take the picture that is an accident in uh, america many years ago uh, the fatigue crack in the steel bridge caused the collapse of the bridge and caused the catastrophic, catastrophic or loss of life. Okay, and so this is uh, supposed to be for our chapter three. And uh, let you guys go back and take a look at more extra example. Uh, give me um, five more minutes. Uh, I like to introduce you guys to next uh, chapter. Uh, on the next chapter, I post the lecture note to you guys already. And on the chapter four, we will talking about the axial. And I like to have this because before this chapter, I call the structural member axially loaded structural member. That is from chapter one to chapter two to chapter three. We always talking about this. And to be more simple, <laughs> we also know this one as the two force member and this two force member is maybe the column is maybe the pass member okay they are allow us you can see it in the column at your dormitory so axial load is just the extent of the knowledge from chapter one plus chapter two plus chapter three for specific for support for more let's see more specific application so this application is going to be two type object one is going to be analysis another one is going to be design okay so we will start with elastic deformation and this one you know from the hooks law and you know stress equal to internal force divided by a and strain equal to the deformation divided by l and then you put over it you get this equation uh Ajahn, tell you about this before that's equation gonna be 
this equation. So please remember this one. The diff elastic deformation equal to internal force time length divided by area and modulus of elasticity. Why is called elastic? Because it follows the Hooke's law. So what I'm said more specific start by the behavior of the material in this chapter is going to be elastic. And then since it's elastic, we can use the principle of superposition to, to consider our structure. I will talking about this later, okay? It won't make you confused. It will make you confused if I'm talking here. And the last one, I said, we're going to analyze the structure, okay? And not for analyzing the structure, you're going to decide the structure for somehow, for the statically determinant. What I'm saying is statically determinant is the structure that can analyze by free body diagram and the equation of equilibrium. Equilibrium. That means all the knowledge and what we learn from the engineering static until until now, we consider that kind of structure, and then at the end of this structure, we will extend our knowledge to consider the statically indeterminate structure. For example, if we have this kind of member, okay? And this member is fixed, is subjected to the force at the middle length of it, of 10 kilonewton. This is statically indeterminate. And then if we have this same structure, okay, but you put another support to fix it as the another end. Okay, and then you also apply the same force, 10 kilonewton into it. This one is statically indeterminate. Why? Because for this one, if you cut it over here and you draw the free body, diagram copied and this structure is subjected to the 10 kilonewton force and you can determine this force okay f to be 10 kilonewton by summation f sub x equal to zero but for this one even you just draw the whole free body diagram. And what we have is the 10 kilonewton is will produce two force at one end. That is going to be F sub A. And over here is going to be F sub B. And then some measure F sub X equal to zero. F sub A plus F sub B equal to 10 kilo Newton. You can also for the F sub A and F sub B. Okay. The problem is you going to set up, you going to set up the com 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 pet TB liti con condition okay for this one you got to set one more compatibility condition to obtain to obtain one more equation so when you have the compatibility condition and you use this with this one and this is two you have two equation two unknown Okay, you can solve this one. This is going to be the learning objective. And this is going to be a big chapter for you guys to 
to study, and this is going to be one written examination typically. And <laughs> the hard part is Ajahn will ask you to know both the analysis and design of statically determinate and statically indeterminate axially loaded member. But if it is the multiple choice, that is going to cover everything. Okay, I cannot tell you yet about what type of examination we are going to have for the midterm examination. We are waiting for the uh, academic senate to conclude what we are going to have it. So that's all for today. Uh, thank you very much for your time and for your attention. See you guys again next Thursday. Thank you.